All right, now the next thing I'd like to show you out is how to evaluate an integral. If uh, you do not have a graphing calculator or your teacher will not allow you to use a graphing calculator, you're going to have to watch part three for sure. Uh, but evaluate, I'm going to show you how to evaluate the numerical values for all of these uh, graphs here, okay? So first thing you're going to do is you're going to input the original function into your graphing calculator. So uh, let's see your negative 2x plus 6. And if you want a standard window, you can go to zoom 6, and that will give you a, what's called a standard window. And a standard window has these dimensions. OK? So that's a standard window there. Now I want to calculate the, I want to evaluate this integral from 0 to 2. OK? So I want to find out the area of that yellow thing there. And so here we go. So here's the graph. Above the trace button is a little mode called calc. So it's yellow, so I have to hit the, the second button, calc. And item number seven here, there's a little sneaky snake there, the integral sign. So hit seven. And notice it's asking you for a lower limit. Now the lower limit is the lower bound. Okay, so I'm just going to put in 0, enter, upper limit, the upper limit in this case is 2. Hit 2, enter, and it shades in a little area there. So that little guy there is 8, 8 units. Okay, so the evaluate answer in this case is 8. My graphing calculator spit that out at me. All right. Now notice the graph in the second one here. The only thing I did is I changed the upper bound to a 4. All right? So I'm going to do the same process. I have to hit second calc, item number 7. Lower limit in this case is 0. Upper limit is 4. Whoops. 0, enter. 4, enter. That's the upper bound. So not only shaded in that little missing uh, triangle there, but it shaded all the way to 4. That little guy there is that little purple thing there. See? Now the evaluate answer for this is 8. <coughs> now notice the answer for this and this are the same, but this shades in more area. So there's something going on here. Evaluating an integral ignores the positive and the negative area. And I know negative area sounds like an oxymoron, but the negative area I call is area below sea level, and this is area above sea level. So what it does is it takes the profit, or actually takes the, the gross amount and the debt, and gives you just the profit. Okay. So think of it in terms of debt uh, gains and losses here. It combines those to give you that. All right, let's do it with a trinomial here, just so you can see the same thing. So I'm going to enter in this function here. OK, now I'm going to shrink this. There's a lot of wasted space here. I'm going to shrink this window or actually zoom in here a little bit by taking away my x max all the way to, let's say I'm just going to go up to 2. So you can kind of see what's going on here. So notice there's a little baby bubble there below sea level. I have it kind of big there, but it's actually really tiny. Now I'm going to calculate or actually going to evaluate this from negative 4 to 1. Okay. Negative 4 to positive 1. All right, so it shades in that little baby bubble there below sea level. And then this big thing here. Uh, so obviously my graph is not to scale, but it's a pretty good representation. It at least tells me where uh, the, the sea level, where the sea level is. At negative 2, that's where it goes from below sea level to above sea level. So this is 16.67. 
And our last guy here for evaluating. This is a trig function. Notice the upper bound is in radians, so I have to change my calculator to radians. Okay, so if you go to mode, it takes you here, make sure it's in radian mode. And then I'm going to enter in my function sine x. Okay, now depending upon my window, uh, I, cha I change my window a little bit here. I'm going to change this to 0, and this is to 2 pi. And let's see here. My, the amplitude of the function only goes up to 1, so this is really, I'm going to shrink this a little bit here so you can see it a little bit better. All right. So I'm going to evaluate at this from 0 to 2 pi. What happened? I'm going to go from 0 to 2 pi. What happened? Ah, this is good. I did this. Notice that 2 pi is approximately 6.28, and my window doesn't go that high. So let's change this to 7. Notice the evaluate answer is zero. Now the bubble above sea level and the bubble below sea level are it's symmetric. It's the same exact size. So that's why it takes the positive gain and the negative gain, and we just get a zero here. All right. Now in the next video here, I'm going to show you how to do these areas by hand using the antiderivative.